Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? How you feeling? And welcome to this week's show of Search and Report. I'm your host, Drew Fernie, and without further ado, let's get straight into the first news item of the week. We got unfortunate news, more unfortunate news for Halo fans. Microsoft's uh, Halo Infinite lost its top director after the delay of its project. Um, as we know, Halo Infinite got delayed back in August um, around that time. It actually got delayed because of just the reception that people gave it. And just the, it seems that they've been having a lot of issues with the development, with a lot of people leaving. Just last year, 343 Industries lost its creative director, Tim Longo, and their executive producer, Mary Olsen. However, now we find out that Chris Lee, who has been with 343 Industries ever since 2008, um, shortly uh, after the inception of 343, has actually left the project. And it is a huge deal because Chris Lee has been part of halo ever since 2008 he's been part of the uh, of the halo development team for such a long time here bloomberg says chris lee who oversaw production of halo infinite at 343 industries which is developing the game for microsoft is no longer working on it he confirmed to bloomberg news on wednesday lee is the second top director on the project to leave in the past two years Lee has been at 343 Industries in two, since 2008, a year after its founding, overseeing the Halo series, and since 2016, his title has been Partner Studio Head. Now this of course has been a very rocky release for the Xbox Series X because as we all know, Microsoft was hoping that Halo Infinite would be a huge driver for sales for the hardware, but given this delay, it's looking to be like... It's looking to be that Halo will not be able to carry the release of the Xbox Series X anymore. There still isn't an exact date of when X, uh, when Halo Infinite will be released, but 343 has said that it will be out next year sometime. I really hope that Halo is turns out to be a great game, and I really hope that they're able to produce a good game, especially given all this 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 release process they've had so far. Because you know, Halo is, is an iconic video game franchise, and um, you know, Microsoft does seem to be very very passionate about Halo, especially 343 Industries. They seem to be very passionate about Halo, and it seems that they actually want to put out a good looking game. So here's to hoping that we get a release date soon and hopefully this this departure by chris lee doesn't affect the development as much as people are expecting it to be and now for our second news item of the week we do have yet another delay coming from cd project red cyberpunk 2077 has been delayed by 21 days by three weeks exactly three weeks exactly why they're still unknown um, but they cd project red did say that the main reason why they're delaying it is because they're trying to i mean they're trying to create nine versions of the game for uh different platforms you know obviously they're bringing out this game to the xbox one and the xbox one x um they're bringing it to the xbox series x the xbox series s the ps4 the ps4 pro the ps5 pc stadia you know you know the deal but this did bring up a massive amount of backlash both from people who are really excited to play the game and by people who are very worried about the business practices and the working environment at cd project red because as we all know delays usually mean crunch and there's been a whole myriad of people and and, and there's just a lot of talking points surrounding cd project red's uh business management style because obviously this is a this is a management issue this is not so much a development issue this is probably managers not being you know not really scoping or grasping the amount of work these games take so they they enable crunch and thus the ones who end up having to do the work are the developers and and this has brought up a whole myriad of issues and a whole myriad of arguments saying that the the industry needs to be more accepting of, of unions the industry needs to be more acceptive of you know good business practices and you know not exploiting uh, developers obviously everybody wants cd project red to be successful in this it has been a little bit shady on their part how they're handling this whole delay process they did say that the game went gold just a few weeks ago and they were confirming days before this announcement that they were delaying the game that there was no there's not going to be any more delays so 
it, there seems to be a, a management issue. There's been reports that even the developers, the team at CD Projekt Red were unaware that there was going to be a delay. They actually found out through the same means that we did through C uh, Cyberpunk's 2077's Twitter account uh, tweet. And it just raises a lot of questions like what is going on at 3d project red are they having management issues is it really a bad working environment is is was crunch something that was meant to be avoided but they just mishandle it some way it, there seems to be some internal communication issues or there's, there's obviously an external communication issue but most importantly there's a management issue and here's to hoping that they're they're able to fix it i mean me this is my own personal prediction i don't think this game is coming out this year i do not believe it i mean people are working from home they're in the final stages they're trying to work with compatibility they're trying to optimize the game for you know they're trying to make nine versions of the game i mean that's a lot of work so it'll i it, me in my personal opinion i i do not see this game coming out in 2020 I hope I'm wrong because I'm super excited for this game. It looks amazing. Here's to hoping that A, the industry gets a better grasp at better business practices, at better management styles, and you know that developers are actually getting treated right because this is not okay. There's been reports of people working extreme, like extreme hours of overtime. Um, Jason Schreier here has been very vocal about it. Cyberpunk 2077 getting a three week delay is unusual, but probably won't change much for the developers, many of whom are going to be crunching into December anyway for a post launch patch. But I sure do hope reality is becoming clearer to those who try to deny it. Look, a CDPR dev told me recently that they just clocked a 100 hour week. Another former dev just told me they saw some of their friends there and they looked physically ill. I won't say the rest of the tweet because it's, you know, it's harsh words, but it, these reports are becoming more and more commonplace in the gaming industry we've had of course we remember uh, last year with uh rockstar and Red debt redemption 2 you know a whole myriad of, of issues with pr and a whole myriad of issues with uh with uh exploiting workers so here's to things changing in the industry and that's as far as i'm gonna say because i can make a whole video on it and i am planning on making a whole scripted video on this and for our third news item of the week we got a surprise nintendo partner showcase it was such a surprise that i've actually haven't seen it completely um it obviously dropped yesterday and um a lot of people it caught by surprise nintendo didn't didn't um uh, didn't announce that this partner showcase was going to come out this week they just dropped it but we'll go over a little bit of a summary here on what they actually announced we obviously got a closer look at bravely default um we got a bunch of, of extra stuff announced for it uh we got a uh, an in-depth look at the game of course there's been there was a game demo release back in march of 2020 i played it a little bit it's a little bit fun it's really it's really fun but we did get um also uh, an announcement that this game will be releasing on february 26th of 2021 and pre-orders are available now on the nintendo eShop. furthermore we got a closer look at what immortals phoenix rising is going to look on the switch and i must say obviously you know with expectations i mean it is a switch it is a pro portable device i mean i don't expect it to look as other powerful uh, to look as good as other powerful consoles but it still looks pretty nice it looks really really good i'm actually super excited for this game it obviously brings back memories of breath of the wild i know i sound like a broken record but it, it looks like a super fun game and you know it obviously uses sort of a similar physics engine with uh being able to move objects being able to interact with uh, different elements and stuff so i'm super excited for this game it comes out on december 3rd of 2020 so be on the lookout for that game if you're into open world adventure games and now for what was probably the second or third most exciting thing coming from this partner showcase is that we got confirmation that hitman and control are coming to the switch in the form of a cloud version now this is something that hasn't been totally marketed by nintendo it's basically you know game streaming much like stadia has been doing so it, it it's interesting to, to me to see that they're not actually putting a lot of emphasis that these games are are cloud version and they're going to be streamed to your nintendo switch but they look like they seem to be running extremely well this obviously raised questions as to you know nintendo is infamous for not having a, the best of servers when it comes to this sort of thing but I'm, I'm not too sure how they'll handle this this uh streaming service 
it even raises the question as far as you know for me if the cloud version of a lot of different games are coming soon for the nintendo switch obviously i mean you know games such as control were coming out with the cloud version for the switch do have a trial version for you to check out um the game before you actually purchase the full game um given that you know you need you do need a stable internet connection and as we all know nintendo doesn't have the best of wi-fi cards and so you know if if you want to play control on the go if you want to play hitman on the go be sure to check out the trial version you know it seems to be working just fine it looks amazing i was extremely surprised by how good control looks i know it's a very taxing game on um on other consoles even on pc obviously this is stream so you don't actually do the you don't actually do the processing on the switch but still it, it's amazing to see a, a game of this quality being played on a nintendo switch with such ease i mean th this gets me very excited for the future of the switch and to see what other games are going to be coming out for the cloud versions for the nintendo switch but the hitman cloud version will be coming to the switch we still don't know when but we do have control available now the cloud version for nintendo switch so if this if you want to be playing control where you wouldn't be able to play control beforehand i would definitely go ahead and check this out and for what i will say is the second biggest announcement from this nintendo partner showcase we got no more heroes one and two for the switch available today this this came out of left field a lot of people were not expecting this however this does seem to be a marketing push for no more heroes 3 which is coming next year we did get no more heroes 1 and 2 running on the switch now and i gotta say i'm not a, I've, I've never played the no more heroes game they look very very first of all very mature i am an adult after all so this is definitely a game i want to check out it the art style looks amazing it, i love the cell shaded look it, it, it looks super super fun it brings me you know memories of bayonetta which I haven't played either. I really got to get my game on, man. There's a lot of games that I have not gotten to play. So I'm super excited about this. No More Heroes 1 and 2 looks amazing. But yeah, we are super excited for No More Heroes 3. It's looking to be a great title for the Nintendo Switch. Um, and then we got two final announcements. One, we got a new game from HAL Laboratory called Part-Time UFO. I got to say this game looks super cute. It looks interesting. It looks like a very interesting game to come from HAL Laboratory. But in what is first of all my most biased opinion i think this is the biggest announcement from the nintendo partner showcase that we got a demo for higher warriors age of calamity we got somewhat of you know a leak regarding this get uh, this demo obviously you know nintendo kind of tends to drop the ball with certain things and they kind of leak their own stuff sometimes but um luckily they only leaked to like a day ahead but we did get a demo for Her the upcoming higher warriors game age of calamity i have played it you know my video is up here on uh, my demo playthrough um we did get on this new this new trailer confirmation that we'll be able to control the divine beast this game looks super super fun it looks like it's not gonna be the typical musu game uh the demo plays amazingly well i will say go and check it out it's a it's a very very fun demo it's it's the whole first chapter of the story you get around like an hour and a half worth of gameplay which is a lot in my opinion and your save file does cross over to the full game once the game is released on november 20th and for a final news item of the week we got what is apparently confirmation that crash bandicoot 4 might be actually coming to the nintendo switch here nintendo life says Activision has been talking about bringing Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time to the Switch for a while, and the official game site has even potentially revealed a Nintendo version ahead of schedule. Now, in the latest development, an individual who took a closer look at the game's INI file has reportedly uncovered a Nintendo Switch profile hitting within Crash 4. This was first shared over on YouTube by Canadian Guy A. Although this could potentially be left over on real code multiple multiple times throughout, the phrase copy from Falcon pops up. This was the project name for Spyro Reignited Trilogy and suggests Toys for Bob could have borrowed some code from the base game of Spyro for the Crash 4 Switch port. I'm super excited for this. First of all, Crash is is an iconic, you know, video game franchise. It's it's super fun to play. It's it's a great platformer. And second of all, if this game comes to the Switch, all I'm going to say is that Crash for Smash. It even rhymes. But, you know, I'll keep my ear to this. It does sound like there is 
basically confirmation that Crash Bandicoot 4 is about to come to the Switch. I mean, it's not, it's no longer a secret. Exciting time, exciting time. This is proven to be a very, very stacked holiday season for the Nintendo Switch. And there's been, there was a lot of skepticism that, you know, Nintendo Switch just didn't have any other games announced for the rest of the year, but they proved us wrong. They, they, they tend to do that. They really tend to do that. And with that, folks, I've been True Fernie. If you like this video, go ahead and get a thumbs up and subscribe. Links to my socials are down below. Please make sure to follow me on Twitch where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, sometimes Fridays, and sometimes Sundays. I'm also an affiliate over at Twitch, so any and all support down there is greatly appreciated. Folks, please take care of each other, but most importantly, take care of yourself. Peace.